In a post-apocalyptic world, Juliet drives through a barren land as she scavenges for anything that can help her survive. When she finds a bunch of abandoned vehicles, she inspects every nook and cranny and even checks the gas tanks, but unfortunately there's nothing useful. After watching the sea for a while, she keeps on driving and eventually stops at a gas station. With a gun in hand, she looks through all the shelves for any food to no avail. Suddenly the ceiling starts shaking and the growling of a monster known as Reaper can be heard coming from the upper floor, so Juliet immediately goes away. While driving, she gets in contact with her friend Harry, who is part of her survivor group. Juliet informs him that her battery is running low and that she'll take a shortcut to return to their base. Moments later, she stops the car when she spots an abandoned RV and takes a closer look, only to find a severely wounded man. As she threatens him with her gun, she demands to see his wound and asks where the Reaper went, to which the guy replies he's locked it inside the RV. He also points out there are cans of food in the RV before asking her to end his suffering, but Juliet just tells him she must save Bullet so he can die by uncovering his wound. Then Juliet enters the RV and fights the Reaper, causing the vehicle to shake a lot as she struggles but ultimately killing the creature with a shot. When she comes out, the man is dead. After taking all the supplies she can find, Juliet goes back to the road and drives while looking at a picture of herself with a guy. Suddenly the wind blows the picture away, causing Juliet to get distracted as she tries to catch it and she ends up with the car going off the road, flipping a few times before landing upside down. Juliet faints and dreams of her life before the apocalypse. On a rainy day, she visited an art gallery but couldn't understand the paintings. She then was approached by the gallery owner Jack, who was also the guy from the picture. He could tell she didn't understand art, so Juliet admitted she came inside to escape from the rain and get some free food. Jack found her amusing and shared a drink with her while explaining how to find beauty in the paintings. Back to the present, Juliet wakes up to discover her leg is fractured and stuck in the seat. It's also dark outside, which means the reapers will be coming out soon and she can't defend herself because her gun has fallen out of the car so she can't reach it. Juliet tries to move her leg but it's too painful, so instead she tries to use the radio, but it isn't working. Using a stick and some wire, Juliet reaches for the gun and manages to move it a bit, but unfortunately her tool breaks before she can retrieve it. Then another flashback starts, showing how Jack left in the middle of the gallery opening to grab a bite with Juliet. She accepted to go to his apartment and she was shocked to see how beautiful and expensive everything was. She also found his drawings, which showed his great artistic skill. While having some wine and cheese, Jack shared all his family drama and how he handled the inheritance. Juliet explained she had no family, but she found it hard to open up and Jack's questions made her uncomfortable, so she decided to leave. In the present, Juliet decides to put up with the pain and uses a pipe to free her broken leg. Then she makes a tourniquet and washes the wound with some alcohol before painfully pushing the bone back into place. A new memory begins, during which Juliet went to a bar with a random man. She noticed that Jack was also in the bar, but she ignored him. When Juliet left with the guy, Jack followed her and discovered the man paying Juliet in exchange for some substance. The guy also tried to kiss her, but Juliet angrily turned him down. Then Jack continued to follow Juliet on the train and eventually reached a very shady neighborhood. Juliet bought more substance from a guy, confirming she was a dealer. At that moment Jack showed himself, so Juliet allowed him to come with her into the building, where she had to pay another dealer before being able to enter her apartment. Inside, Jack discovered how poor Juliet was and offered his help, but Juliet snapped, saying she wasn't a charity case. She tried kicking him out but Jack refused to leave, so Juliet grabbed an injection to reveal she was also an addict. This caused Jack to get out. Back to the present, Juliet manages to make an improvised cast with things from the car, then she works on fixing the radion but sadly nobody answers her call. At that moment she hears a reaper approaching, so she quickly crawls out and grabs her gun before hiding in her car. Juliet stays quiet while the reaper wanders too close to the vehicle and suddenly the radio comes alive with Harry's voice. The reaper hears it and comes her way, so Juliet has no choice but to throw the radio out of the car. The creature finds the radio and throws it away before approaching the car, but when it's about to get inside, it hears a noise in the distance and goes away. Afterward Juliet replaces the bullets in the gun while going through another memory. One evening, Juliet was beaten up and went to Jack's apartment for help. Jack didn't judge her or ask questions, he gently cleaned her up, tended her wounds, and left her to rest. The next morning, they had breakfast together and Juliet asked if she could go for a walk. Jack guessed she actually needed a fix, so an offended Juliet tried to leave, only to find the door locked. When Jack told her he wouldn't let her go until she was clean, Juliet got furious and started breaking Jack's things as she screamed. Jack waited for an opening and then hugged Juliet, comforting her with a kiss. In the present, Juliet finds some glow sticks and throws them outside to see if any reapers are near. She doesn't see anyone, so she comes out and retrieves the radio. Suddenly she hears a weird noise and tenses, so she throws the glow sticks in various directions until she finds a reaper on top of her car. Juliet immediately shoots it before rushing back into the car, where she waits for the creature to shoot again. However the reaper surprises her from behind by pulling the window cover off. A terrified Juliet tries to move but the reaper grabs her leg, 
so she retaliates by starting the car and pressing the accelerator, causing the wheels to hurt the creature. The Reaper runs away and Juliet tries to shoot it, but she misses. While she's looking out, the Reaper sneaks inside through the opposite window and growls, startling Juliet into shooting it. After the Reaper runs away, Juliet tries to fix her radio but her hands are shaking and there isn't any more alcohol she could use to calm down. Another flashback begins, showing that Jack and Juliet became a couple and moved to a brand new house together. Juliet had been very nervous during the move, so Jack touched her face to make her smile. Then he gave her a tour of the house and mentioned one room was for their future children, which made Juliet very uncomfortable. Jack also wondered if she would ever say that she loved him, but Juliet told him he already knew. Back to the present, Juliet fixes the radio and contacts Harry, although she can't hear him well. She tells him what happened and asks for help, but after Harry says something about a beacon, the connection is lost. Juliet searches the car and finds a box with a beacon, so now she'll have to read the manual to activate it. As she works, she thinks about the day she discovered she was pregnant. The couple was very happy to see the positive result on the test, but unfortunately nine months later the baby died during labor and the couple had to go home to an empty nursery. In the present, Juliet manages to make the beacon work. Then she barricades the windows just in time for the creature to come back. After seeing her through the windshield, it moves to the window and tries to push the cover, so Juliet pushes it down with her feet. The Reaper decides to start hitting the car instead, and at that moment Juliet gets a call from Harry, who tells her they'll save her soon and reminds her to use light on Reapers. Juliet knows this, but her flashlight is broken. Suddenly she hears a noise and turns to discover that the creature has broken the windshield, so now it's coming after her from the front. Thankfully now Juliet can turn on the headlights, and the brightness scares the creature away. Afterward Juliet calls Harry, who is bad news, they will not rescue her until sunrise because it is too dangerous to go out that far at night. This triggers another memory. Since the loss of the baby, things had been tense between Jack and Juliet, and one day she just ran away. Jack managed to find her and an argument ensued, during which Juliet admitted she didn't really want a child and Jack pressured her into it. Furious, Jack walked away from the car, intending to take the subway alone. He blamed Juliet's former addiction for the baby's death and broke up with her. Back to the present, Juliet hears an engine nearby and begins honking the horn to get its attention. Two men on a bike stop next to the car and one of them comes inside saying he'll help, but he turns out to be a cannibal who wants to kill her. As Juliet struggles to stop him from stabbing her, the Reaper comes back and drags the guy out to crush his skull. The friend immediately leaves on the bike and Juliet watches the Reaper feed on the body. Another flashback reveals that after the argument, Juliet went to a bar to get drunk and ignored all the calls she kept getting from Jack. At that moment she saw on TV that there was a chemical attack at the subway station, which killed over 30 people. Then she got a call from an unknown number telling her that Jack was hurt during the attack, so she fled to the hospital. The Juliet in the present grabs her gun and considers self-deleting, but the memories keep going. When she arrived at the hospital, she learned Jack couldn't speak anymore, but he still communicated, he touched her face with his special gesture through the curtain and then used a board to say I love you. For the first time, Juliet answered me too. Jack also made her promise she would never give up, and that makes present Juliet put down the gun. Determined to keep her promise, Juliet takes a flare plus two gas containers and leaves the car. She proceeds to douse a container with gas and then lights the flare, waving it around to get the Reaper's attention. When the creature starts approaching her, Juliet walks backward and waits for the Reaper to reach the container to shoot it, causing an explosion. However the Reaper runs away just in time. Juliet looks around to find it, but the creature suddenly appears behind her and makes her drop the gun. Terrified, Juliet pushes those skinny arms away and goes back into the car, only for the Reaper to grab her wounded leg and make her bleed. As Juliet desperately reaches for her gun, the Reaper pulls her out of the car and throws her to the ground. Then she shoots the creature twice, making it fall. Once the creature stops moving, Juliet cries and remembers the day she went back to the hospital only to discover they took Jack away because he died, causing her to have a breakdown. In the present, the morning finally comes and the Reaper starts moving, but Juliet is out of bullets. Suddenly the creature climbs on top of her but instead of attacking, it gently touches her face, making her realize this is Jack. This triggers a memory about the day they met, Jack talked about fate bringing people together and to prove his interest, he closed the gallery to leave with her. In the present, Juliet hugs Jack while finally telling him that she loves him. After putting a new bullet in the gun, she pushes their heads against each other to end things and go into the afterlife together.